Chapter 7, Rotational Motion. Goals for Chapter 7. To study angular velocity and angular acceleration. To examine rotation with constant angular acceleration. To understand the relationship between linear and angular quantities to determine the kinetic energy of rotation and the moment of inertia, and to study rotation about a moving axis. So, previously you learned about kinematic equations, and those are kinematic equations in one and two dimensions. So they were considered linear kinematic equations. So these are your linear kinematic equations. And these are your rotational or angular kinematic equations or equations of motion. <clears throat> They're the same. The only difference is A for acceleration in linear motion is alpha for angular acceleration in rotational motion. V for velocity in linear motion is omega for angular velocity in rotational motion. X for linear displacement is theta for angular displacement. So you would just replace A with alpha, V with omega, and X with theta, and you've changed from linear motion in a straight line to rotational motion. So as you look to the right, you see two figures, figure A and figure B. One radian is the angle where the arc is the same length as the radius. So S represents the arc, and it's the same length as the radius. So below an angle theta in radians is the ratio of the arc length to the radius. So theta equals arc length divided by radius. Radius equals arc length divided by theta. And theta, I'm sorry, arc length equals the product of theta times radius. And I created this fact sheet that compares linear motion to rotational motion. I also have the circle for radian. And as you look over to the right hand side, you'll see conversion factors to convert an angle to radians. So one pi radian is 180 degrees whereas half of a pi radian is 90 degrees, and two pi rads is 360 degrees, the full circle, two pi. All right, so you want to remember these when you are converting from degrees to radians, or revs per minute to radians per second. These are your conversion factors to the right. On the left, you'll see 
radial acceleration and tangential acceleration, radial velocity, tangential velocity. You'll see period, which we've seen before. Period equals 2 pi over omega. And that period is the time it takes to complete one revolution around a circle. There's also a sign convention. If your wheel is rotating counterclockwise, then the rotation is positive. If it's rotating clockwise, then your rotation is negative. Rigid bodies, a mass in motion, a lot of particles with masses, m sub a, m sub b, m sub c, at distances r, from the axis of rotation. Each r is the orthogonal distance from the particles to the axis. This body has kinetic energy because it is moving. If it weren't moving, then we could say it has potential energy, which is denoted by an uppercase U. But right now, this body is in motion, so it has kinetic energy. And if you recall, K, kinetic energy, equals one-half mv squared. But in rotational motion, velocity equals r, your radius, times your angular velocity, omega. And if that velocity is squared, then it's r squared times omega squared. So you just replace that r squared omega squared in this equation for v squared and you'll get k equals one half m r squared times omega squared. Now to get the total kinetic energy, this is your equation. Factor out the one half m sub a r sub a squared plus m sub b, r sub b squared, plus m sub c, r sub c squared, dot, 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 times omega squared. Now, what's inside the parentheses is known as I the moment of inertia. I is how mass is distributed, or I should say the moment of inertia is how mass is distributed in relation to an axis of rotation, like an arm, a leg, shoulder, a knee. It is a scalar quantity and it is always positive. The following slide contains a table with moments of inertia for various bodies. So we'll basically concern ourselves with the items on the bottom row, the hollow cylinder, the solid cylinder, the thin walled hollow cylinder, the solid sphere, in the thin walled solid sphere. Each object has its own moment of inertia. The next slide is simply another of these objects. Moments of Inertia from your textbook. So let's look at the race of rolling objects. Which rolls down the hill faster? 
the solid sphere or the hollow cylinder. Now, the hollow cylinder is a thin walled hollow cylinder. So I'm just going to write thin walled hollow cylinder, which has a higher moment of inertia because if it has a higher moment of inertia, it's slower. If it has a smaller moment of inertia, it's faster. So we have a solid sphere and a thin walled hollow cylinder. The I for solid sphere is one equals two fifths MR squared. Hollow cylinder I equals MR squared. So you're given M, your mass is one, your radius is two, that's for both. Plug those in and determine which has a smaller moment of inertia and then you'll know which object moves faster down the incline. Different bodies have different moments of inertia, as you've just seen with the tables. And that's a measure of the resistance of an object to changes in its rotational motion. It's related to Newton's first law, which is considered the law of inertia. The further the mass or the farther the mass is from the axis, the greater is its moment of inertia. So it's slower. Let's look at an example. Angular momentum, L, is a quantity of rotation of a body. Think about a figure skater. Watch her arms. When they're spread out, she's moving slower. When she brings her arms and her legs in closer, to her center of gravity or center of mass or axis, and she spins faster because her moment of inertia is smaller. So when drawing arms and legs inward, she reduces the distance between the axis of rotation and some of her mass, which reduces the moment of inertia causing a faster spin. On this slide, you have a video that talks about the center of mass. A 1.2 kilogram disc with a radius of 10 centimeters, which you will convert to meters, rolls without slipping. If the linear speed of the disc is 1.4 meters per second, find A, the translational kinetic energy, B, the rotational kinetic energy, and C, the total kinetic energy. Finally, calculate the same with a solid sphere. And here it is worked out for you. Now 
And I want you to work through that problem step by step. I pretty much solved it for you, but I want you to read through it, go through it step by step. The moments of inertia here for the disc is right there. The moment of inertia for a solid sphere is here. And for your K total, make sure you use, I left it blank for you, make sure you use the right numbers when you're calculating. And for your cylindrical disc, this should be your answer. And for your sphere, this should be your answer.